All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the ultimate Pokemon battle using linear algebra. So today we have two contestants, Pikachu and Charmander, and PN is the it hit points, so HP of Pikachu after round N. Round N, so at the end of the round N, CN is the HP of Charmander after round N. So, assume we have those two Pokemons that battle with each other and you know, PN and CN represent their life points. In particular, if a life point goes to zero, then we're, it's the end of the battle because of Pokemon. So I don't know what happens when you get zero. They like go back to their Pokeballs and recover. And assume that initially the HP of Pikachu is 100 and the HP of Charmander is 50. And suppose Pikachu and Charmander, they're very boring. They always do the same moves. And those moves are controlled with the following dynamical system. So assume the HP of Pikachu and Charmander in the next round, they're related to the following. Suppose PN plus one equals minus 3pn minus cn and cn plus 1 is minus 2pn and 3cn. And let me explain you the strategy of this game. So, <laughs> Pikachu is very smart. At every point, it, he electrocutes itself. So this is electrocution. It's a weak Pokemon, whenever it hits Charmander, it electrocutes itself and it loses minus three times its cur current HP. And also, not only that, it gets hit by Charmander. By Charmander. Which is kind of, just real, it's kind of silly. PN plus one will be negative, but it's okay. So we have that, and also Charmander isn't very smart. Uh, no, Charmander is actually smarter. So first of all, it gets hit by Pikachu. And you might say, why is it related to the HP of Pikachu? Well, it makes sense because the stronger Pikachu is, so the, you know, the more HP it has, the more uh, Charmander will lose, you know, uh, hit points. Because, uh, you know, if Pikachu is in form, has like 200 HP and slams uh, Charmander, then we have a problem. <laughs> Whereas if Pikachu is like very weak, only has 10 hit points, then his hit won't be very effective. Okay, we have this, and also, lastly, Charmander is very smart. He heals himself. Heals himself. So that's why every time Charmander hits, then he gains, you know, three times its own hit points. So that's good. But, but the question is, he could still lose, because what if Pikachu is so strong that this is bigger than that one? Okay? And the question is, uh, first of all, I mean, the reason I'm doing this is we want to find actually an explicit formula for PN and CN. And we can actually do this even though it's a complicated system. Moreover, we want to ask ourselves, who loses first? Will Pikachu lose first or will Charmander lose first? Or both? We'll see. But really, I mean, the, the main thing is finding a formula for the two. <laughs> okay, well, turns out, first of all, you can rewrite this system in matrix form. So PN plus one and CN plus one. It's simply minus three, minus one, minus two, three, PN and CN. So what this tells us that in the next round, here is how the HPs in the next round are related to the HPs in the current round. 
and they're related by this thing, which is called the transition matrix. It's literally the thing that helps us transition from the current round to the next round. Okay, and in general, this is a difficult problem. But now we know linear algebra. In particular, we know how to, you know, diagonalize this matrix. So you'll see why this is useful. So diagonalize A. So it turns out A is PDP inverse, where D is the diagonal matrix with minus 5, 0, 2, and P is 2, 1, 1 minus 3. And again, I've done several videos on how to diagonalize a matrix. If you find the eigenvalues, you find minus 5, 2, and if you find the eigenvectors, the one corresponding to minus 5 is 2, 1. The one corresponding to 2 is 1 minus 3. Then, second thing is, uh, we want to find a n. And I'll explain you in a second why this is useful. So, you see, if a is PDP inverse, then you know a squared is PDP inverse, PDP inverse. This becomes the identity matrix, and you're left with PD squared P inverse. And so in particular, A squared is PD squared P inverse, AN is PD to the N P inverse. So now, just let's calculate A to the N, and I'll tell you how it solves our problem. So, and I forgot, A, A was this transition matrix here, but... Anyway, so a to the n becomes p d to the n p inverse, and that's 2, 1, 1 minus 3, and then minus 5 to the n, 0, 0, 2 to the n, and then 2, 1, 1 minus 3 inverse. Because the point is, for a diagonal matrix, it's easy to find d to the n. You just raise each component to the nth power. And then what you get is 2, 1, 1 minus 3. Again, minus 5 to the n, 0, 0, 2 to the n. And to find the determinant of this, I'm sorry, to find the inverse, you find the determinant. So minus 7, so minus 1, 7. You flip those two signs, minus 3, 2, and then you put a minus sign there. And if you actually calculate that whole product, and I'm going to skip this part, you get the following. Uh, 1, 7 times 6 to the minus 5 to the n plus 2 to the n, 3 times minus 5 to the n, minus 3 times 2 to the n, and 2 to the minus 5 to the n, minus 2 times 2 to the n, and minus 5 to the n, plus 6 times 2 to the n. So, this is our matrix A to the n. Now, why is that useful? Because remember, A is what allows us to go from the current round to the next round. So, suppose you start with P0, C0. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know this marker would work. But anyway, P0, C0, initially we get 150. All right. Then what is the next round? P1, C1 would be A times P0, C0, by definition of A. And that is P1, C1. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, that's a, a times 150. The question is then, how do you get P2C2? It's almost like R2D2, but P2C2. So, P2C2. Remember, A is what allows us to go from the next round to the previous round, to the, from the current round to the next round. Well, to get from P1, C1 to P2, C2, you multiply by A. So, P1, 
P2C2 is A times P1C1, but P1C1 is A times 150. So A times A times 150. And which is precisely A squared times 150. And you see, so to get from the initial step to the second round, you multiply by A squared. So to get to the end step from the initial round, by analogy, you do A n times, and you get A n times 150. And this makes sense if you think about this. So you start with 150. You apply A to it to get, you know, uh, you know, uh, P1C1. You apply A to it to get P2C2, etc., etc. So to get sort of the nth term, you multiply A n times to the initial step. And so, how do you find a formula for P n C n? Well, you have this formula for A n here. And you just take this formula and multiply it by this thing times 150. And you're then left with this completely explicit formula, which is a little bit ugly, but you're left with minus 50 over 7, 2 to the n, plus 750 over 7, minus 5 to the n, and 100 over 7, 2 to the n, plus 250 over 7, minus 5 to the n. So in other words, given that recursive formula for Pn and Cn, now you actually have an explicit formula, one that gives you the HP of Pikachu and Charmander at every round. And so let's now calculate the first couple of values of Pn and Cn, and let's see who wins or loses first. So, now P0, C0. Well, let's see. And again, you should know the answer. It should be 150, but let's just uh, uh, verify that with this formula. So it's minus 50 over 7, 2 to the 0, which is 1, and then 750 over 7 which is indeed 700 over 7, which is 100. And similarly, 100 over 7 plus 250 over 7, it's 350 over 7, which is 50. So this does work. Now let's see the next round. Well, we know Pikachu is going to lose for sure because you have two negative things, but if you do n equals 1, you get minus 50 times 2, so minus 100 over 7, and then minus 5 times 750 over 7. Which I'm not sure, let me see. Um, so 250, let's see, so minus 100, so um, 250 plus 3,500, uh, so minus 3,750, so minus uh, 3,850 over 7, whatever this is. And this one becomes, so uh, 100 times 2, so 200 over 7. And then minus 5 times 250 over 7. And then we just get, you know, um, 1,250, so minus 1,450 over 7. So you see, interestingly, well, Pikachu loses, but also Charmander loses, because both are negative, and basically the answer is, it's a draw. Because turns out, it's true that Pikachu is a bit silly, because he gets hit by Charmander and electrocutes himself, but remember, Pikachu had more HP to begin with. So his effects are so powerful that it cancels out the healing process of Charmander. So this sort of represents a healing process. It is more or less the healing process. So 
That's why it's, you know, um, it's a silly battle, just one round, but it's cool because we did some linear algebra and what more do you want? All right, I hope you like this little Pokemon extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.